One of the biggest lies that people believe is that as they age, their metabolism slows down. Yet when I was younger, my metabolism was slower than it is today. When I was 10 years old, I actually weighed almost the same as I do now at 36. At that time, I was considered a beast and I was the second heaviest kid in the school, which inspired me to change and to address my weight issue. Over that year, I lost 50 pounds. And ever since then, I've been very focused on making sure that I maintain and train my metabolism. Right, you have to maintain and you have to train it because it doesn't just happen naturally. You have to put in effort to become more healthy, to improve metabolism. It doesn't just all of a sudden happen, which leads us to an excellent comment saying, these children, they have have high metabolisms. They will not gain weight. First off, he's totally right. We do have a high metabolism because we've trained it that way. Welcome to the house of pain. But as far as not being able to gain weight, well, we do want to gain weight in the form of muscle. We absolutely don't want to gain in the form of fat. And we do gain weight in terms of muscle day in and day out from the activities that we do. And as far as children goes, maybe me, but I know I call him Bricey Boy. He's really Bricey Man. He's nearly 36. What age is someone no longer a child? Age 50? I don't know. But again, age is not the biggest factor into somebody's metabolic status. We know people who are older than us who have faster metabolisms. We know people who are our age or younger than us who have much slower metabolisms. Again, I had a slower metabolism when I was younger compared to today. As people age, their metabolism can tend to slow down for a variety of reasons, including a decrease in muscle mass, hormonal changes, and especially less activity. As people age, they tend to move less. But your metabolism slowing down as you age is not a universal truth for everyone, and there are ways to improve it which we wanna improve our metabolism because as I age, if I haven't worked on my metabolism and it slows down, then if I eat a small amount of food, I could gain weight. And I should specify too, by weight, I do mean fat, again, not muscle. So I don't wanna gain fat because by having more inflammation, then I'm likely going to feel more tired, have less energy. I'm not going to want to do as much. I may feel more irritable. I may have more joint pain. The reason why I don't want to gain fat is not just for vanity reasons. It's because if I had more weight, then I'm likely just not going to feel overall my best. To add on to that, the more someone weighs, the harder their heart has to work, the harder their organs have to work. So for me, I want to improve and maintain my metabolism also to keep my heart healthy and to prevent other diseases. And like you said, if you were to age and your metabolism were to slow down, you would be eating less. By eating less, you are inherently having less nutrients. And by having less nutrients, you can lose muscle mass, your bones can become more brittle, and your body is most likely not going to work as well as it would if it did have that proper nutrition. I would think this is why older people as they age, they say that they can't sleep as well because if they're eating, let's say a thousand calories, there's just no way they're getting in enough magnesium, enough protein, just overall enough nutrients to help the body rest, repair, and recover during sleep. So how can we improve our metabolism? Let me just say too that we are going to share more broad, generic ways to improve metabolism and things that we've done to improve our metabolism. But keep in mind, someone who has diabetes, someone who has cancer, someone who's metabolically healthy, we're all going to have different approaches and strategies that are going to help our specific situation. And if you'd like to work more one-on-one, -on -one, ask more questions and create a individualized plan for improving your metabolism or your health status, we do offer coaching. There's a link in the description, but to try and simplify a very complicated, nuanced topic, simplistically, our metabolism is dependent on the amount of energy our body demands and uses. So if we want to increase our metabolism, we therefore want to increase the amount of fuel or food that our body needs. First thing I think of when it comes to making my body require more food is that I need to move more. So if that means just parking further away in the parking lot to have to walk into a place that you're going to, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, going to the gym, biking, hiking, going for a swim, stretching, any kind of body movement is gonna require more calories than when, for instance, I'm sitting on this chair. 
Well, technically, if you're sitting in, in this chair, you could still burn more calories by blinking more or playing Sudoku or playing chess or doing anything that requires the body to exert more energy. Absolutely. And even eating more protein, for example, can increase your metabolism since protein has a higher thermogenic effect than things like fats or carbs, meaning that it gives off more heat because it is harder to break down the protein. Or going off what you said about heat, our bodies want to remain at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we're outside in a cold environment or we're taking a cold shower, our body has to work harder to create more energy and more heat to keep our bodies at that 98.6 degrees. Or likewise, if we're outside and it's really hot or I'm in a sauna, a steam room, same thing. My body has to create more energy, create sweat to cool down my body and keep it at that 98.6 degrees. So things like cold therapy, cold showers, drinking a cold glass of water or the other extreme steam rooms, sauna, a hot tub. In both situations, those extreme temperatures therefore require my body to need more fuel, more energy to keep me at that body temperature. Technically, you could even add more spices, cayenne pepper, ginger, turmeric, hot sauce to your foods, and that could also increase your metabolism. But these are small things. The bigger picture things would be to move more and to have more protein. I mean, I guess it really depends on what the person is currently eating, because if they were eating things like breads and pastas and soda, what I would first do is I would transition away from those foods and put more nutrient dense whole foods into my diet because things like bread, pasta, soda, those things make me feel like I want to take a nap. They put me in a food coma and they're not really filled with nutrients in general. So that would be the first focus. Switch away from that kind of stuff to things like meats, eggs, dairy, fish, fruits, vegetables, more of a whole foods diet filled with a lot of nutrients at its core. That would make the biggest impact on improving someone's metabolism versus having some hot sauce or cayenne pepper. So big picture, eat more real foods and exercise. Small picture, have some cayenne pepper. Well, and another quick fix or small hack, but I think it's made a big difference in your life has been the addition of apple cider vinegar because I feel like it's helped your digestion. And once it's helped your digestion, then you sleep better in the morning. You're going to have more energy to want to move more. It's just kind of a domino effect if you have just better digestion. So I feel like the apple cider vinegar, small thing, but has made a big impact for you. I've been putting apple cider vinegar on top of my burgers, kind of tastes like mustard and I feel less bloated. So in general, I feel like I'm getting more nutrients out of that food and I can actually eat even more food than I could before. I also do have an R ring and I track my sleep every night. Ever since I started having apple cider vinegar, my deep and REM sleep have both doubled. I'm like really surprised about this, but they have both doubled since adding in apple cider vinegar. I didn't change anything else. The only thing I changed was the apple cider vinegar and my sleep got so much better. Like you were saying, these things compound on one another. So if I sleep better, I'm gonna feel more eager to move more in that day. And if I move more in that day, then I'm going to wanna to eat more, have more calories. I'm also digesting my food better with the apple cider vinegar. So I feel less bloated and when I more, feel more comfortable to eat more food, I get more nutrition in. So if I'm moving more and eating more, at least logically to me, I'm improving my metabolism. Well, and another thing to help with digestion would be having smaller meals, but then to help with metabolism, I would want to have more, not just smaller meals, I would want to have frequent meals. And then the body is just having to say, okay, time to digest again. Okay, here we go, digesting again. So it's kind of, just a way to keep stoking the fire, the metabolism fire. You know, this is what bodybuilders do. They have periods where they bulk and periods where they cut. Now, this can be taken to an extreme, of course, but in general, I do think this is a healthy process as this teaches their body to handle a variety of different foods and trains their metabolism. I think this is one of the big mistakes that people make as they age. They don't intentionally have periods where they bulk or have extra calories and also while doing that, increase the intensity of their training to increase the demand of their metabolism to use those calories. And then on the flip side, have periods where they cut and reduce their calories, pull back on their training and focus more on recovery. Instead, many people get into the habit of 
eating the same things at the same times. The body is very intelligent and knows how to adapt quickly to anything that we do. If I were to eat breakfast at 9 a.m. every day and it was always two eggs and one slice of bacon, my body would get used to that meal coming in at that time every single day. And because of that, it wouldn't be as challenged to adapt and grow. Just like how you will build more muscle in the gym if you regularly change your exercises, change the amount of reps that you do with each exercise, and even change the amount of rest that you have in between those sets, so too will your metabolism get stronger if you change what foods you're eating each day, the amounts of those foods that you're having, and then varying that every single day as you go. So I think it's important to regularly, intentionally change when I'm eating, what I'm eating, and how much I'm eating to keep the body needing to adapt and to stay metabolically resilient. If someone's currently eating, let's say 1200 calories, and they're like, holy cow, I have to eat more meals or have more food. I'm just so full eating this amount of food I'm currently eating. I get it. I've been there where I was eating about 1200 calories in a day, and I was able to double my calories within about six months. People can do it much faster. I was just, I don't like feeling full. So what I did is I took what I was currently eating and I said, okay, this week, I'm just going to add in one more slice of bacon every day for the week. My body got more adjusted to having that amount of food. The next week I said, okay, I'm going to add in one more egg every single day, have my body get used to having that amount of food. The following week, I'm going to have one more bite of chicken. And I just very slowly, gradually increased the amount of food I was eating, increased the amount of activity I was doing. I didn't gain any weight and I was able to double my calories and improve my metabolism by just very gradually increasing the amount of food I was having. And I should add too that I increased my activity, but really I was still going to the gym the exact same amount. I was just able to bring more intensity to my workouts because I had more energy. So it was like I was doing the exact same amount of time for activity. I was just able to be more efficient with the time I put into my activity. And of course, to increase metabolism, it's also good to stay hydrated and to make sure that you're focusing on getting good quality sleep. Because adequate sleep is essential for the body to produce hormones that regulate appetite. And a lack of sleep has been shown to increase things like cortisol and insulin resistance. So the recipe for improving metabolism is eat whole nutrient dense foods, challenge the body daily with activity, prioritize quality sleep and stay hydrated. And spice up your life. And maybe have some apple cider vinegar on your burgers.